Hi traders, good to see you back. I've spent a long time going through these charts and uh, just mulling through the daily, weekly, and monthly patterns just to see if there's anything that's really standing out. Uh, I think overall, I think we're in for at least one more leg up in the equity markets before we see any major selling. Uh, and I'll just go through that now and show you show that with you. Um, share that with you even. The uh, overall, there's no clear sort of message in any of the forex charts, but uh, there are a few things I'm looking for. So uh, let's let's start to pick our way through this. This is the dollar index, and you can see a decent move up here. Uh, and then a few days of, of selling and we're pretty sideways but the fact that we couldn't break above uh, Thursday's close suggests that I, I think we could see some short term weakness in the dollar index if we can break down that sort of level that will help the commodities and the equities into Christmas which we're only a couple of weeks off Christmas now anyway if we look at the T notes, 10 year Treasury, US Treasury notes, they uh, saw some weakness in the price action on Friday, <coughs> so money is coming out of the safe havens. Further confirmation of uh, bullish moves can be, see in, can be seen in the recovery of the transport index from Thursday's drop and the financial index picked up from its selling on Thursday so overall the markets are okay and like I said look as if we are set for um, some sort of move to the upside in what's left of 2011 let's look at oil <coughs> Um, we've closed just above the uh, 8 and just under the 20 EMA on this we, and you can see a lot of resistance here huge amount of resistance we're just clinging on very weak invents considering we're in winter uh, the invents have been pretty weak so if we can't hold this area here, then the oil is definitely going to come down. But short term, if the equity markets are going to hold up into Christmas and the dollar index is going to drop some, then I'd expect to see one last burst uh, for, for oil before we see any selling. If you look at the fibs on oil, you can see how we... This is pretty much the, yeah, this is the highs and lows from, from the year we dropped from these highs uh, end of April down to these lows in October uh, a nice W pattern to take us up into the top of the Fib zone uh, and now we're just, just coming off this Fib zone but I think we can bust up we can get a three and through if we come up there in other words another attempt to break this trend line and I think we could come up and see 105 no swing trade action there, well, unless you want to buy a pullback to something like 99 with a stop down there at 97.30 or 97.20 um, that's a relatively close stop for a swing trade on oil but it's a low probability trade because you're buying at the highs uh, gold is sideways at best no clear direction in the gold if we start breaking that level there that is potentially a reversal bar under there although we didn't break Friday's close uh, okay, it's, it's not clear I would just stand aside I and mean, if we look as if we can come out of this apex and bust up then you know higher close 
could be good. I mean, you could, uh, for a very modest risk, take a break of 17.15 for a stopping bar and a stop down there at 17.05. I mean, that's a very minimal risk to see if we can bust up that, through that apex. I'm thinking about it, that's probably the best trade I've got to offer you uh, on this video because of the fact that the stop is so tight and if we start to break below 1705 then that's that's done and we are going to drop but based on what I just told you about the equity markets that will suggest we could come up, well that's interesting we've broken down through a trend line and we've retested it so that sort of scuppers that trade really um, the best alternative is to see where we close on Monday because if that closes back above this stopping bar then that, that's definitely in play and that could, like the equity markets, break up uh, into some kind of Christmas rally uh, the Nasdaq supports the Christmas rally as well that was looking very, very dodgy but we've almost engulfed, not quite engulfed to Thursday's price action so we do look as if we are capable of, of that move now to trade it, um, you can see here on the Dow, we we recovered from um, Friday selling. The only way you could trade this is, I think, is to take a break of that what, on 12,157 with a stop under here. But that's a big stop. So again. You could try and get a, a pullback to something like 12,044, just then see if we can break up. But um, you I don't like buying at the highs. I do not, and I certainly would not swing trade at, at these highs. If you look at this weekly chart, you can see why I am bull somewhat bullish on the Dow because we closed above the trend line here so a pull back to the trend line again is 12,040-12,050 uh, so that's why I think we can move to the upside so all we did on Thursday was to retest the 8 uh, engulf that selling so a pull back to that area there could see us bust up and retest these highs just over 12,500 and let's have a look elsewhere. Um, the volume in the corn is extremely weak. So let's just take a quick look at the grains. So the dollar, if the dollar is going to sell off, we'll see some sort of recovery in these grains. And the, basically, the crop yields. Talking to farmers this year, the crop yields have been very, very good. The weather. This is why these crops are, uh, these grains are so weak. Um, so we, there's a pullback to that trend line at the moment. So with a weak dollar, we might see a move back to something like 640 in the corn. And ooh, uh, on the weekly, that suggests we're coming even lower. And we've broken back through a uh, there's a CBO to the downside on that one, but we have got a lot of support here. And this bar here closed marginally higher than this bar here. So, certainly no swing trades. Uh, I will be looking to see if that uh, corn and the wheat can, uh, beans can recover on the back of the dollar uh, potential fall. I think the weakness we're seeing in commodities supports the uh, stronger stock market because if the pressure is coming off commodity prices uh, that this is cocoa that's extremely weak this is cotton come down drastically from the highs of uh, 175 down to uh, just above 90 coffee is just down here at the lows and sugar is uh, may potentially be trying to bottom here. I'll be watching the sugar. That that could be uh, get, that could get very interesting. So you can see why the gold's under pressure with all these other commodities coming under pressure. 
So um, I actually think the commodity, the equity markets, will bring the gold up. So therefore, that very small uh, risk you're taking with that tight stock could well be uh, the way forward. Uh, pound came in contact with 50 MA on Thursday and then sold off. Got a potential little stopping bar there. I, I think looking at the charts, uh, I think we could see something of a, of a break up, a break to the upside in the pound. I like this higher low here, but we could. The danger is we're just consolidating, we'll hit this this uh, line here and then just drop further. So there's definitely no swing trade there, and, but I will be looking for strength uh, intraday. Euro is a very tough call, it's a political football, so we need to be very, very careful. You can see it's a uh, very tight range, but so far we've been dropping, consolidating, dropping, pulling back, dropping, consolidating, dropping, consolidating. So yeah, this is a major trend line along here that we're holding at the moment. But that we are just clinging on. We are literally just clinging on. So that m direction, if we close above 34.20 on Monday, we could see some moves to at least 135 plus. We start with a lower low on Friday. We start breaking the lows, 32.78, and that could drop fast. Uh, again, it, it is. It did make a new low from this range on Friday with a close above, but we've seen that before, and all we've done is consolidated and then dropped. Okay, so uh, I, again, I'll trade it intraday. I would not trade it uh, a swing yet. I'm looking for this one. I'm watching this very, very carefully. Aussies have got still the highest interest rates by far in the developed world, and I think they're going to come down. So, if this proves to be a hangman and we start closing below here, I'm going to look for a short, and that could be potentially a very nice swing trade. And I keep my eyes very closely on that, but because of the potential short term weakness in the dollar, I think we may have to wait for that. Into next year, I'll be looking to short and hold that or the US. US dollar CAD, very nice move up on the weakness on Thursday, pull back on Friday. I think we'll drop further back here, but I've, I, again, I'll be looking for longs on this, a buy and hold on US dollar CAD, but not yet. I'm not looking yet. Um, what else? Um, so that's all I've got for you really. Uh, intraday I'm looking for pullbacks on the Dow to 12,050. Looking for a break of 1714 on the gold with a stop at 1705. Uh, not touching anything, not swing trading any of the uh, current currency markets at the moment. Going to wait until Monday's close to see if the Aussie, the pound, the euro and the US dollar CAD are going to set up. All, none of the other um, currencies interest me at the moment. All right, though I am, however, keeping a close eye on this Euro Swedish Krona. It's, it's had a huge drop into major support. But uh, looking to see if there's any reversal signs on that one. Because although the Swedish have had great GDP results, the projections for next year are weak. So if there's any kind of stopping bar here, I would take a stopping bar on Monday to see if we can climb back up. Uh, otherwise, let's just have a look at some of the intraday action in the Euro US. You can see at the moment, whenever we hit major areas of resistance, we are selling off. So, uh, star worked here, put, uh, star worked here off of, off of resistance. So, the, the euro has been selling at 34.30 area very, very nicely up until now. Uh, on Friday, we were holding 
Um, this, this could be a three and through. We might bump into this a couple of times on Monday, Tuesday, uh, but finally bust through. So that is something I would watch for intraday. But you can see the struggle into that trend line. Um, so I'll just keep you posted on this and talk more about intraday setups and, 60 minute, and the price action and 60 minute charts in the videos in the coming weeks. Uh, coming days and weeks to try and to give you more out of that. You can see in the Euro session on Friday we had a nice hammer. In the US sessions we've been getting stars. The Americans have been selling the Euro has been buying it on well not that particular couple of days. Uh, so you can see, I mean, it's a great one to trade intraday, but it's very it's in a tight range and we need to get this out of the range if we're going to get any significant moves. But that's typical of the market. So I mean, markets only break out 15% of the time. So all this range trading is a good way of making money if you are a day trader. So I suggest you back test this, get very, very familiar with something like the Euro, so that when these setups occur, you're in there to take advantage of it. All right? I hope that helps. Uh, there's a lot changing with Trade the Easy Way in the coming days and weeks. The Forex course next week, very, very excited about because I completely rewritten it. Um, so it's simpler, more direct, and very looking, really looking forward to that. If you want one of the last remaining places, let me know. Uh, if you are, if you've done one of the courses in the past, then there's a modest uh, retake admin fee. Uh, I will give you the details for that. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your weekend and see you at the next update.